Can partnerships between the community and health agencies like the local Department of Health help to play an important role in addressing health concerns, especially within minority communities? Well, this was one of the questions we tried to answer as the Office of Minority Health within the Suffolk County Department of Health sat down with a long-standing community partner to discuss how these relationships can help improve the health of communities that need it the most. This is Community Conversations. We're going to start by having you introduce yourself. Sure. So uh, my name is Adesua Ogaskan Watson. I am the director of the Office of Minority Health, which is in the Suffolk County Department of Health Services. Okay. Um, so I'm here. Talk, you're talking about Shops, the program uh, that was started out of you guys' office. Can you talk to me more about what Shops is? Sure. So um, when I was hired, Shop was already in existence, but we got the idea from other barber and health initiatives that were happening around, um, you know, different states, and we decided to bring it to Suffolk County and tailor it to our community. Mm-hmm. You know, there was canvassing done throughout Suffolk from east to west. And we found barbers and beauticians that were willing to partner with us to become health ambassadors. So basically just to share health information and resources with the community around the conditions that our office focuses on. Chronic conditions like heart disease, diabetes, stroke, just healthy nutrition, physical activity, etc. Mm-hmm. You guys went to the shops to share that uh, information and then in hopes that these shop owners would then be able to pass along the message. Is that the general idea? Right. So initially we had the barbers and beauticians come out to us. Um, they had few health modules that they would learn. Um, they would go through that, get a certificate, and then you know allow us to come in. But over the years, we've been coming to them recognizing that they want a business every day. Mm-hmm. So we want to meet them where they are and just allow us to come in while they're doing hair so that we're not interrupting their business, but just allow us to speak to patrons, speak to them about health conditions that they feel are important to themselves, their communities, and then also conditions that we know are impacting um, communities of color. Gotcha. Why do you feel like it's important for health organizations to get involved within communities? I feel like it's important because health is not just in one place or comes from one avenue. Mm-hmm. We have to recognize that in diverse communities, folks are getting their health information from multiple places. And like our houses of worship, barbers are a place, as mentioned, places of healing, places of discussion. Barbers and beauticians sometimes are like the impromptu health provider, mm-hmm. mental health provider, counselor, friend. So what better place to come um, to a barbershop beautician when you're getting your hair done and with someone who you trust to get the information from. And so we want to make sure that, you know, stylists and barbers are informed so that they're sharing the correct information. And then if they don't know something, we to direct people to. Yeah, that's really important. Do you feel like the similar model could be used in other community spaces as well? Absolutely. As I mentioned, houses of worship, similar um, to barbershops, you have um, folks who are providing spiritual healing and they're trusted and well known in the community. And so we also could take this same model into houses of worship, into community based um, organizations, spaces, rec centers, um, utilizing people who are trusted, informing them with the correct information, recognizing their importance and their value. I always say make sure that we value our community members just as much as we value our practitioners mm-hmm. and folks with degrees because they have a level of experience we don't, mm-hmm. a level of trust from the community that we don't. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, you can take this model anywhere and tailor it you know, best to fit that community. Makes sense. And do you feel like doing these types of programs and initiatives can help with some of the hesitancy or mistrust that there might be between communities of color and uh, health professionals. Oh, absolutely. Um, So it makes a huge difference when you come out to the community, um, you meet them where they are and let them know you value and respect their time, um, their input, and have a conversation with them about why they're hesitant about a vaccine, hesitant about going to the doctor to get regular checkups, um, hearing from them why they're concerned, because sometimes we blame communities and say, you know, you're not following up, you're not mm-hmm. compliant. Um, but then when you really speak to community members, you recognize that sometimes providers aren't making time and space for them to ask questions necessary for them to make proper health changes um, or stick to a health plan. Mm-hmm. So it does make a huge difference. And I think that's why partnership is so important. What can we have to look forward to with the relaunch of the Suffolk Health Outreach Partnerships program. So this program has been a part of our office for so long. 
Um, it's a valued program because we are doing something that's innovative in public health. Um, it's a program that's allowed me and many of the folks in the health department to get to know our community members, our small business owners. Um, and I'm just hoping since COVID, because you know during COVID we couldn't do these visits, mm -hmm. um, that we get out to the community, see the barbers and beauticians who are still functioning, seeing you know who's still around, who isn't, what changes have been made and occurred, and maybe figure out what new barbers and beauticians are in the community, and also other you know places we can shop the program around. Got you. One last question: What sorts of programs do you uh, envision that'll be able to be put in place there, like? maybe is it education screening kind of thing I would say any and everything that's allowed um, in the purview of the health department and the, the you know the shop right. or the community-based organization right we've done CPR trainings in shops we've talked about breast cancer we've um, discussed STIs and mm -hmm. HIV prevention we've um, we've done a number of things. We've had STI screenings in shops, so it's really diverse and um, we're hoping that we can bring what's needed. So hearing from the community and then bringing what's needed to the community. What about mental health? Uh, mental health is, is also something that we really should discuss. Yep. Um, during the pandemic, we realized that that was like the second pandemic we were dealing with. Mm -hmm. um, substance use, mental health, isolation, mm -hmm. uh, not knowing how to access crisis services in the county is extremely important. Mm -hmm. Learning about harm reduction, so folks who are using substances to cope with mental health, where can they go to get assistance? So we definitely, hopefully, will be bringing that as well. Amazing. This all sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to, to seeing what comes of all this and really getting back into the community to, to help them learn and, and take charge of their own health. Thank you, and we thank you so much, Dr. Fenton, for um, supporting the office um, and uh, allowing us to have this interview and bring back the SHOPS program. Thank you, guys.